Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We have um, Dr. Richard Lane here, who's a clinical psychiatrist and psychotherapist trained in cognitive neuroscience and emotional research. And he's going to be sharing his research with us um, and uh, um, uh, from his book, Neuroscience of Enduring Change, Implications for Psychotherapy. So welcome, Dr. Lane. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the invitation. Okay, so um, it's so hard to know. There's, there's so many types of psychotherapy out there. Most of us find a psychotherapist through a recommendation from a friend. Um, however, I, sometimes we're not necessarily really thinking about what kind of psychotherapy, all the different types of treatments out there and whether that psychotherapy would be best for me or, you know, the person seeking. So can you give us an kind of an overview of all the different types of psychotherapy out there? And mm -hmm. then we can take an example of, let's say someone who is afraid of, you know, going to parties to all of a sudden has social anxiety to has, you know, problems with a relationship and what kinds of techniques would be best for them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think the first thing to say is that um, if you look in the literature, there are over 500 different kinds of psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of interest in trying to whittle that down to try to figure out what are the common denominators that really make for successful psychotherapy. And progress has been made on that. Um, you know, we think that having a strong therapeutic alliance is really important that having a therapist who's empathic and compassionate and judge, uh, non-judgmental mm -hmm. and um, who's going to be accessing both thoughts and feelings as well as talking about behavior. I mean, but activating emotion in therapy is important. Um, I think that um, some of the major types of th psychotherapy kind of differ in terms of the kinds of problems that they're targeting and how persistent or pervasive they are. So uh, I think one of the leading types of psychotherapy now is cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's good for a variety of situations, conditions. Um, depression, anxiety can also be used for kind of specific situations um, like fear of heights or fear of going on an airplane where it's just very, very specific. Mm -hmm. There, um, you might try something like exposure therapy where, you know, when you're afraid of something and you keep getting exposed to it over and over again, the, the fear gets reduced, mm -hmm. okay? Fairly simple. Um, you might have states that are very bothersome, but are kind of more intermittent. You could have, be depressed for months at a time, but then recover. Similarly, you might have episodes of anxiety that are situational. Mm -hmm. And I think um, cognitive behavioral therapy and emotion-focused psychotherapy are very good. Mm -hmm. With cognitive behavioral therapy, there's a real focus on what kinds of automatic, maybe negative thoughts and appraisals are contributing to your distress. So mm -hmm. if you can change your thoughts, that will help. Mm -hmm. I think um, with emotion-focused psychotherapy, you are um, really trying to activate authentic emotion in the session to change emotion with emotion. Mm. Um, and, and you said that was gestalt, is that right? And well, it's in the gestalt tradition. Okay, we'll focus on people experiencing things. Um, and I don't know what that means. Like I understand the cognitive behaviors and thoughts that contribute into a state of being and how you can change us. How does one ch use emotion to focus on emotion? Uh huh. Well, um, a, a, a way to understand this is that many of the problems, sometimes many of the problems that people have arise from painful emotions mm -hmm. that are avoided in various mm -hmm. ways. You don't pay attention to them. You may suppress them. Mm -hmm. You may do things to avoid activating them. Mm 
Mm. And an emotion focused approach would say the, the problem is that you keep avoiding the emotions. If you, it's hard to face those painful emotions on your own, but if you can establish a therapeutic alliance with someone who's there to really help, right? Then activate those painful emotions and then work on with the help of the therapist to kind of develop a different perspective mm. on the situation. Mm. It's like you may be very ashamed about something that you did in childhood, right? You've mm. never talked to anybody about it. Mm. But then, you know, a therapist can say, well, gosh, look what was happening. Your parents were getting divorced. You were all alone. What, how could you have handled that on, mm. on your own, you know? What would you want to say to that young child now? If you, if you could go back in time, how would you help that person? And mm. that induces a different kind of emotion that changes the emotional experience. Okay, got it. And Does then that make sense? Yes, I do get, I get it. I mean, I know of um, you know, people that have had you know, post-traumatic stress from being in war zones, um, people who've had physical and uh, mental abuse from other people. And those are things that I've seen. They just go into like, I just, I, they get numbed out because it's just overwhelming to That's experience right. that, which is very different than I have anxiety when I'm doing a presentation. You know, it's a very, right. it's an altogether different type of thing. And yeah. then how about um, insight or traditional psycho psychodynamic work with Freud and Jungian. Yeah. What are those people called? And, uh, and what psychodynamic, they're psychodynamic psychotherapists. Okay. That's what they're called. Okay. Yes. And, and, the, the, and the term psychodynamic really has to do with the idea that many times the motivation leading us to do what we do, sometimes do things that don't make sense to us uh, or are problematic. Uh, the motivation is unconscious. It's, um, you know, outside of our conscious awareness. And so the idea here is that if you can understand, make the unconscious conscious, come to understand why it is that you interpreted the situation as you did, why you acted as you did, it begins to make sense. And you, you start to have the, the idea is that you have the freedom to make different kinds of choices once you understand where your real motivation is coming from. Uh, okay. And, and that type of therapy is really recommended when it's not just a, one particular situation like a fear of heights. It's not just a temporary state like depression or anxiety, but it's a kind of recurrent pattern, recurrent problems. For example, uh, not being able to have a satisfying romantic relationship and going from one relationship to another right. uh, without being able to find the right person. Uh -huh. Oftentimes, when you make changes within yourself, it's easier to find the right person. Mm, okay, so it's kind of matching the psychotherapy for the problem at hand. And then, there, yeah. and then, um, and there are things like EFT and EMDR, which are mm -hmm. kind of these other types of techniques that don't necessarily, I think, fall into, although they have elements of every single one of these things. They do. How would, yeah. How would you describe what those are? Well, I think EMDR um, is, a, is an example of a type of therapy that doesn't fit into these other categories, but fits into this more general way that we're developing to understand what psychotherapy is about. So um, in, our, in the book that we've just published and in the 2015 uh, theoretical paper that we wrote, that was the foundation for what became the book, you know, we really tried to look at psychotherapy as a psychological process that's influenced by the infrastructure of the mind, that is brain processes that are underpinning these mm. psychological processes. Mm. And we highlighted in particular, the role of memory and emotion and the interaction between the two. Mm. And by doing that, because we understand quite a bit now about how the brain the brain systems mediating emotion and memory work and how they interact, it really has an influence on how we think about how psychotherapy works. So 
EMDR doesn't really fall into one of those specific categories that I mentioned before, but it has everything to do with reactivating old traumatic memories and reworking them in a way where you're kind of altering the nature of the emotional experience associated with those memories. And uh, it then changes the memory. That's, we, there's this phenomenon called memory reconsolidation that is really at the heart of what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. It used to be thought that you know, memories were formed and they were stored in our brain and they were permanent and never changed. And there was a, a very important study done in rodents in the year 2000 that really reactivated this whole area. It showed that memories uh, could be altered. That, and the current model is that every time you recall a memory, every time you reactivate a memory, it essentially is brought into what we call a labile state or modifiable state. And that memory can be updated with new emotional information that comes online while the memory is in the labile state, okay? And then uh, it's labile for four to six hours. And then it, and then it gets reconsolidated, uh, stored again, but in a kind of updated way. Oh. after a night of sleep. Wow. Okay. Wow. And so, wow. If you think about <laughs> this, so memories are not just a record of the past, but they're a guide to the future. And the reason right. why, you know, so much of what we do is guided by our expectations about what's going to happen in the near future based on what happened in the past. So if we can update our memories, mm. it can update that which is guiding us moment by moment in our daily lives. Oh, wow. This is so fascinating, Kenny. I want to talk to you more about this okay. in the second, second, um, second section about memory. Um, this is very, very fascinating. I'm so excited. Okay. So we've been talking to Dr. Lane, who um, is the author of the book, Neuroscience of Enduring Change, Implications for Psychotherapy. And um, we've been talking about the different types of psychotherapy out there and how one would be appropriate for certain type, you know, how, what the traditional understanding is of what kinds of therapy you do for what kinds of presenting problems. We started talking about EMDR, which is um, a, a certain type of psychotherapy doesn't fit these traditional models yet. It's actually very powerful in um, creating change. And so in the next segment, we're gonna be talking more about memory and how that's so critical to actually creating enduring change. Um, thank you so much. I can't wait to talk to you in the next segment. Thank you so much. <laughs>